But uh, keep in motion. Copy. We see the release and deployment. Second bolt release. IROSA now deploying. We're going to see, and again, there's no mechanism to make this unfurl. It's doing it all with the stored energy of the array itself. And the, the white sections you see on either side, so those are the booms, those are going to unfurl and tend to curl up, uh, similar to as we were talking about, if you were to take a straw, cut it lengthwise, roll it up, and then just let it go, it would naturally just try to curve back into that circular structure. And that's what those booms are going to be doing. There's a series of magnets. The crew's also going to be keeping an eye on. Body back about three or four degrees that help our view. <laughs> that's much better, thank you. A little bit further would be even perfect. And Frank, we can uh, just barely make out those magnets. I think all five of them have clicked uh, closed at this point. Uh, I've got four, and there are five. All five are closed. Okay, copy. Thank you. Good job, Josh. Nicely done. We finally run that microwave we've been running through. Us. Nick, do you know where we are over the planet? You're just uh, south of Alaska, getting ready to go uh, do a pass down the uh, west coast. Awesome. Florida. You might even be over Houston by the time the deployment finishes. That's pretty cool.
So the array continuing to unfurl this, the view that Josh Cassett is getting right now as it unfurls away from him after he released those two launch restraint bolts. I can see air traffic. Sure. Yeah, there's a cone shell. There. Yeah, I see it. And that view from Frank Rubio's, if you look at the booms on the side, you can see they, they kind of curl up after they continue to deploy. This is a look at the very far end. You can see all of the solar cells in the middle there and those booms as they continue to stretch out. They're they essentially snap together uh, into that circular structure. And then they have magnets that are helping to help them maintain that structure when, once they snap in. And Frank, Josh, while we uh, hold position and wait for the uh, deployment to finish, just kind of give you a heads up on the way forward, at least near-term steps. We've got the uh, tensioner bolts that we're going to do, uh, and then we'll move into kind of cleaning up the scoop and the cable bag, and then we'll focus on trying to get the arm clean and the uh, FSC in a good config. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks, Josh. are continuing to watch as these unfurl. Again, as you can see, they're covering up some of the uh, the solar cells on the existing arrays, which are still tied in to the power channel. But uh, these new ones coming in with a higher efficiency, obviously brand new, so I haven't lost any of that efficiency that you lose um, over time and being exposed to that harsh environment of space. We're going to be able to increase our actual power output. So we're, we're aiming to have six of these total eventually deployed on the International Space Station, this rollout solar array technology. Um, we did an initial test of these, this type of array uh, several years ago on the space station just to see how the mechanisms worked, how the power generation worked, um, and then ultimately culminating in some permanent additions to the station. Uh, this same type of rollout solar array technology used on the NASA DART mission, which was uh, our asteroid redirect. It's that storm. Yeah, it's crazy how big it is. Affecting the entire country. And we are passing. It's coming up on the uh, Pacific Northwest. Okay. Just about to pass over the Pacific Northwest, and as any of our viewers in America are aware, there's some pretty significant winter weather hitting a lot of the country, so our crew members getting a view from about 260 Satu miles above. <laughs> While this rollout solar array, almost done deploying, we'll note the same type of solar array, this rollout technology is going to be used on NASA's gateway station around the moon as well. That's going to be our launching point for the Artemis program and future lunar landings, eventually establishing that sustainable lunar presence on the moon. So our crew members continuing to stand by, observing 
the rollout after this deployment sequence is complete. We'll have a couple of uh, final steps. For Josh Cassida, he's going to have two blanket tensioner bolts that he is going to release. These essentially activate a spring that are going to pull on some internal wire to uh, the solar array itself to add some tension, which will be uh, necessary as we're maneuvering and gimbling the solar arrays as we always try to point them to track the sun. confirmed we've got a good deployment on IROSA. So Josh, you're go to move into position to do the tensioner bolts R11 and 12. Copy that. And for both of you, I've got a handover in 15 seconds. Copy that. 